Blade Smiths, welcome to the Forge. And welcome to our legendary bladesmithing competition like none other you've ever experienced. Bladesmiths, here in the Forge, we draw our inspiration from history and history's legends, like King Arthur and his legendary sword in the stone, Excalibur. Well, here in our first round of competition today, you guys will be choosing your fate by drawing your own swords from this stone. Etched on the side of each one of these blades is a particular Damascus pattern that you will have to execute in your final blade by the end of this round. I'm gonna call you up one at a time in a random order, and you'll draw your sword from this stone. Scott, you're up first. Pick your poison, buddy. That's not the one, huh? Oh, there it is. All right, what do you got there, Scott? 100 layer Damascus. Ooh, good luck with that one, buddy. All right, Jared, choose your sword. What'd you pull? Ladder pattern in Damascus. Colton, come and choose your sword. All right, what'd you pull, Colton? Twisted Damascus. How am I supposed to get a twist Damascus blade forged in three hours? Your three hours starts now. I choose 16 layers alternating of 1095 and 15 and 20. My plan is to get enough small pieces that I can stack together to form my 100 layers. It's too freaking big for this forge. This is easily the hardest thing I've ever done. Colton's 18 years old. He's been forging since he was 10. But here we have a twist pattern Damascus. What are we talking about here with this? What Colton's going to have to do is forge weld his layers together draw them out into a bar and physically twist the bar. I'm going to get two billets forged out so I have twice as much material to get those layers up so you can actually see that pattern and go from there. Colton, he's over there on Big Blue and his forge welds look great. My welds are taking amazingly. I'm not having any problems at all. It's miraculous. That stack is big and long. Yeah. I believe what's left has a very good weld on it. So I keep going. I got the billet all drawn out. I want to get the layer count up. So both of these are 16 layers. So that would be, what, 32 layers? If the layers weren't there in that pattern, it would kind of be a model. So. I'm a little nervous just because there's a big gap in between these two pieces of steel. But I flexed it pretty good, so hopefully it'll stick. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I think I'm ready to twist. Right now, I still have 16 layers. Scott still has to do a restack. Yeah, ho hopefully he's got that math right. With seven layers of 16, that'll give me over 100 layers. Woo! -hoo. Man, that Colton, he's doing a great I, job. And that's the cool thing. Colton is done. All he has to do now is make a knife. This kid is smart. I got an hour left to quench, and might as well just do it now. Colton quenches. I pulled out of the oil, and it's perfectly straight. Now, I have plenty of time to finish grinding the bevels. And there he goes, Jarrett's in the quench. Comes out fairly straight. It has a little bit of a uh, corkscrew to it, but nothing I wouldn't be able to grind out. I get the blade roughly shaped. I'm pleased with the pattern. I am not pleased with the handle. I am going to have to do a lot of alterations to it to make it work properly. Scott just quenched his blade. Whoa! Surprised, it's pretty straight. But right now, I've got to get the scale off so I can dip it in acid before the clock runs out. Three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of Damascus competition is over. Blade Smith, welcome to the stone chop. In this test, we're going to test your edge and your overall construction of your blades to see how they hold up. I'll be smashing them into these stones. Dalton, you're up first. You ready?
Well, Colton, first things first, your blade held up really well. There's evidence of some serious scratching from the, the stone, but we're bashing a, a knife into a rock, so I expect some kind of abrasion, and that's what I find. This is an extremely slick handle. There's not really much on this handle keeping me from falling back here, but all that being said, you got a nice looking knife here, so well done. Scott, how you feeling? A little nervous. <laughs> Understandable. Well, Scott, as you can see, you're all in one piece. Um, this one took the slightest of roll right here where I can feel it underneath my finger. There's some cosmetic issues going on here. Your uh, spine jumps down and then handle jumps up and there's some gapping in between the, the guard and the, and the blade, but uh, your blade held up well, so nice job. Thank you. Jared, you're up, you ready? Sure. <laughs> you sound excited. Yeah. Well, Jarrett, your, uh, your blade held up really well. Your edge, where I was hitting, it's no longer as sharp as it was. It's still got an edge in spots, but there's a lot of glinting along there. I really like the profile you got going on here. This reminds me of, of old Celtic iron knives and fun stuff like that. I like the proportions of your handle. Put my hand in there, everything is comfortable. All in all, it's still straight, still good, so well done. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the leather bag slice. Now, this is all about how sharp your blades are and how well they cut these bags. Colton, you're up first. You ready for this? Okay. All right, Colton, let's talk about your edge here. On the first two cuts, you can see right here, it's not as sharp from the dulling from cutting onto the stone. But the edge over here is razor sharp, and that part did cut into this bag. So your blade, it will cut. All right, Scott, your turn. Ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Scott, some dulling from hitting the stone, but there is an edge over here that does allow for a cut on the bottom right there, so it will cut. Thank you. All right, Jared, your turn, so you ready? Go for it. All right. All right, Jared, the grind that you have over here that was affected by the stone, it's not as sharp to cut through these bags. It will not cut. Jared, it's pretty obvious your blade doesn't make the cut literally. <laughs> and for that reason, I'd like to invite you to shake our hands and then please exit the porch. Come on forward, my friend. I think if I had a little more time with not dealing with that crack that came in there, I would have had a little more time to get that edge nice and sharp and cut the bag. I had a blast competing, and everybody was super great, so I had a fun time. It was cool just for the experience. 